Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special election edition, special webinar. Today is November 5th. It is a very important day for USA. Is it going to be Trump or Harris? Tonight or in the next couple of days, I guess we will try to, we will find out. Tonight, I prepared this webinar for stock picks for both outcomes, things that we need to be aware of and prepare our portfolios, whether we are day trading or whether we are swing trading. I'm going to talk a little bit about both. However, the emphasis is going to be more on stock picks for both outcomes, for Trump and for Harris. And uh, first off, I want to introduce myself. I see um, a lot of new people in here tonight. We have a full house. I wasn't really expecting this. I'm recording this session, and I know many of you guys are right now probably viewing on record uh, when you are going to be viewing, but a lot of you guys are here, so this is totally unexpected. Um, and again, the archive link will be sent out tomorrow. Uh, or later on today, depends on how the processing goes. Uh, and my name is Anka Metcalf. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com. I have been a professional trader for more than 25 years. I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. I have always worked and uh, been on the institutional side. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest in the equities markets and futures markets, or basically any market. Uh, if you wanna trade cryptos, if you wanna trade options, whatever you want to trade, we are using a universal method of trading. I do run two services with uh, Trade Out Loud. First one is the Stock Swing Trader Service. It was uh, created in 2010. And uh, it was literally one of the most, it is one of the most successful ones to date. Um, I also run a swing trading room for futures. So I have a lot on my plate. Uh, I have created this room in 2017. In 2016, we have uh, created one of the most successful courses that uh, teach traders how to generate income, supplement their income. It's the Power Income course. Uh, extremely successful course. And uh, we do also offer trading education for swing trading and day trading. We do specialize in high velocity moves. Today, we had such a great follow through in the market that we had a massive velocity move in all the indices. Uh, it was a nice momentum type of day. I wasn't really expecting based on the overnight reaction into the markets. I wasn't really expecting this kind of a move, but we positioned and we managed to get like 80 points in NASDAQ today. And our trade was more than three R's. I'm going to show you some, uh, uh, some charts later on. I'm also the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system that is based on eight layers of price support and resistance that um, I keep uh, an eye on before looking at the pattern to get into the trade. So I use price pattern, price action, and location in order to identify trades. I have uh, created trigger times for day trading stocks, day trading futures that are working 99% of the time, except, you know, when you're getting releases and everything is delayed. Um, these timings are very important because how many times have you gotten in a trade and let's say you had the perfect setup, you had the nicest uh, target potential to run three hours, four hours, you had velocity. And then at some point you got triggered in the trade and it stopped you out a lot of times to the penny, and then the price action rotated and went back where it was destined to go. So I could tell you right now when I first started trading, it happened a lot. It didn't happen all the time, but it happened a lot. So I made it my mission to study this phenomenon to see what the specific timing is into the market, because everybody knows that the market goes up, down, up, down, up, down. But I have dissected price action 
for two and a half years before I came out with my proprietary trigger times. And they are um, working extremely well. And especially that they have created a framework uh, for day traders to take advantage of the most volatile momentum of the day. And that is the open and trade with precision. Uh, the risk is the same on each and every single trade by position sizing. So you're not adding any extra layer of risk. Uh, so it works perfectly. So these, this is our proprietary uh, uh, trigger time uh, specific um, um, tap in for us. We also have uh, specific price zones and these uh, specific price zones allow us to determine targets immediately uh, based on the institutional four points uh, of uh, that we have on every single chart, whether it's futures, whether it's stocks, whether it's uh, uh, Forex, Forex react extremely well to these uh, levels as well. And uh, they allow us to identify uh, support resistance levels that are outside, they're built into price. There are four specific price zones and they're built into price and they are not natural support resistance, for example, that are created by pivots or moving averages or anything else. Uh, these are, again, one of the best kept secret of institutional traders and also chart synchronicity and divergency, which is highly important. Uh, for example, we have uh, crossed a couple of months of very choppy market and into a very choppy market environment where we had uh, dis uh, where we didn't have synchronicity. So we had heavy divergence into the market, meaning that you had one index higher, another index lower, and this created a lot of chop for the stock market as well for the futures market. Basically, I teach traders how to generate income in the first two hours or less. And then I also help traders create their own wealth ecosystem because the first thing is to start generating income aside from probably uh, some type of other job that you have uh and supplement your income so you could have the extra money that can be allocated into a swing account and into your investing account so you can create the whole ecosystem the wealth ecosystem that's how you really jumpstart your wealth quick disclaimer uh before we get started everything that we are discussing tonight is for educational purpose only and it's not construed as an investment advice regarding the purchase, sale, securities, options, features, for it, or any instrument of any kind. Uh, trading involves a very high level of risk, especially if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have the trading education to start dabbing into the market. Uh, and definitely it's not suitable. Uh, trading it does, it's not suitable for everyone or traders, all investors, because you could lose money. And before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives your level of experience and education and your risk appetite. And obviously individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time, commitment, and effort. Without these, you cannot make it into the any kind of market. Uh, results may not be typical. Individual results will vary. You definitely must do your own research and make your own trading decisions. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, what to expect this week. Uh, we are hours away from uh, some of the polls that will be uh, closing on the East Coast. We will see the return of volatility that will cause really outsized swings that are going to create some damage to current chart levels. This is what happened in 2016. This is what happened in 2020. So we will observe some hectic price action. Now, what happens when you have uh, this type of price action is uh, not only that it produces the damage to the charts, but also the spread widens. So for example, if you're a futures trader and if you're going to watch some futures charts tonight, which I personally will, uh, especially as we're getting closer to midnight, as we're getting closer to 1 a.m., I will be starting to watch some charts very seriously. Um, I'm not going to keep it a secret, and I have traded uh, in 2016 uh, overnight, and I did make a bowl load of money. 
everybody was uh, expecting um, a Hillary Clinton win uh, and was expecting a big drop into the market. A lot of uh, uh, traders, institutional traders uh, to their trading desks, for example, in the Asian, um, you know, in the Asian market and in the London market. Uh, and basically what they did is they allocated supplemental trading desks to these offices to trade that overnight and counter that overnight move, where we had a huge surprise in 2016 with what Trump went that created a very, I would say, uh, a brief pullback and then a skyrocketing like six to 700 or 1000 point move. And this happened in less than 30 minutes or so. So it was incredibly volatile now you have to be you know very careful when you trade this um the margin requirements may widen for tonight uh i was a little bit surprised that uh our brokers uh the, my broker for example did not send me that love email where they would um they would widen uh, the margin they will raise the margin requirements uh so so far so good Uh, but be very, very, very careful. In 2020, likewise, it was um, it was kind of like a four or five days in uh, of really uncertainty into the market where the market was very confused as to what was happening. Uh, what are going to be the affected instruments? Uh, the affected instruments will be uh, the ETFs. So I'm talking about the QSPICE, Diamonds and Russell. Uh, futures, right? So futures, NASDAQ, futures, uh, S&P futures, uh, Dow futures, Rus uh, futures, Imidy Russell. Uh, also bonds are going to be affected, ZB, ZN, right? TLT, for example, for stocks and metals, gold and silver. And we're going to talk about metals tonight a lot. Uh, be prepared for a delay in results. Uh, handle your open positions with caution, If you have, if you're a swing trader, uh, handle your all your open positions with caution. Be ready to raise your stops. Be ready to lock in some profits. Take our profits into targets always, especially throughout this week. Uh, states voting for uh, futures of uh, the future of um, marijuana legislation are Florida, South Dakota, North Dakota, and Nebraska. So what does this mean? Pay close attention to the cannabis stocks, to the marijuana stocks. In Massachusetts, and I'm not going to go like into strict detail. So these are some highlights. Uh, so in Massachusetts, where medical and recreational marijuana is already legal, vo voters will be weighing in on the possibility of legalizing psychedelics. So there are a few psychedelic stocks that I will be revealing for my clients next week that if this is going to come into place, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, the first ones that are going to dab into those positions. Uh, also in Florida, Amendment 3, uh, if if this goes through, uh, there will be a fundamental legal um, legal changes to recreational marijuana use for adults over 21. So if approved, it would permit personal use, not only that, but it will allow licensed businesses to cultivate and sell cannabis in the state of Florida. So this is huge if it goes through. So again, those cannabis stocks may have a jump. Uh, also, these are i put a list here uh you could take snapshots or you could take snapshots but i'm going to send you guys the recordings and these are some of the u.s based companies that i found uh this is green thumb industries uh Curaleaf holdings uh, uh truly cannabis corp verona holdings the uh, terrace corp so these are the symbols right here um also there are Uh, some Canadian-based companies that you guys are a little bit more familiar with. One of them is uh, CRON, which Cron, which uh, uh, I have actually traded it in the past quite a lot. Tilray, who doesn't know Tilray? Okay, ACB. So th there are really huge Canadian-based companies. Uh, these, this is a list. I just pulled out a list of my cannabis stocks right here, and you know that I have on my watch. You can see CRON here, SMG Weed, um, IIPR. This is all, also uh, has really great moves. STZ, uh, MJ, which is uh, which is uh, you know kind of like the essence of everything that is in here. Tilray, etc.
What else do we have this week? Well, this is outside of election, right? So these are election related, but we also have the FOMC Fed rate decision on Thursday, November 7th, because election is not going to happen tomorrow, uh, but it's going to happen on Thursday at 2 p.m. So the Fed is expected to hold rates steady at 5.25 to 5.5 percent. We'll see if that's going to happen or if we're going to get any kind of surprises. Uh, if by any chance throughout this, you know, um, seminar, you guys are interested in joining our programs. And if you're interested in trading the aftermath with us, feel free to go to our website, go under our services tab. We have, let's say, like I said, the two services, uh, the futures trader, uh, day trading futures and stock swing trader. And if you're interested in uh, futures trading, you can trade the aftermath with us. With us. We were on fire uh, I'm so happy that October, October is by definition one of the most difficult months to trade into the market where the markets remain kind of uh, choppy. Uh, so if you guys don't want to take vacation sometime, don't take it in the summer, don't take it in the winter, just take it in October, September, October are great months to, uh, to, take, uh, to take a vacation. Maybe next year, I, I definitely plan on taking like a couple of months off. Uh, all the programs and going on uh, on a vacation. So anyways, but my money is still going to be in the market. So um, and most likely the swing trader is still going to be active, but I'm going to take a little break from uh, the day trader because uh, like I said, October, and, uh, October is not a great month to trade. Uh, so the, this is like, literally, if you look here, these are basically three days in which we capitalized a lot of money. And uh, we had some impressive trades. So if you're interested in trading with us, uh, I will provide you uh, the link. It's $299 a month to produce this. These results is just pennies, okay? Uh, let's talk about volatility because uh, here's the chart of the VIX. Uh, today we had pretty much like an inside kind of day into the VIX. We're going to take a look at live charts as well in a few moments. Um, and here I, I have some levels that I share on uh, X with everybody and I share with my clients as well uh, in uh, the futures trading room and in the stock swing trader. And uh, basically, we do have some notations here. So we have a huge level of resistance. And if the market is going to and if the VIX is going to manage to break above this 2380, 24 bucks, 24 dollars is what I'm looking for. Any punch above 24 dollars, the market it, uh, the market is going to start crashing, right? And crashing really bad. So crash positions, everybody. Uh, make sure that you um, have a strategy to either trade inverse CTFs to protect your long-term portfolios or uh, take some profits and uh, just uh, raise your stops on those longs because this is not going to be uh, this. This is going to be ugly right here. So anything that trades over twenty four bucks, maximum caution. Uh, however, if the VIX is going to uh, break below twenty dollars, uh, and I would say eighty cents, fifty cents, I would say more fifty cents. So uh, twenty dollars and fifty cents, the market is going to start moving higher. And if the VIX is going to start breaking $14.50, the market is going to blast higher. One thing that I have noticed yesterday, and this chart is from yesterday, like I said, we're going to look at some uh, brand new fresh charts from tonight in a few moments, especially that the futures market has already opened uh, at 6 p.m. Take a look at the volume here. There's a lot of hedging that is going on right now. So there are a lot of institutions. I mean, you don't see any other volume. This volume eclipses anything that is to the left-hand side. In fact, you don't see any kind of volume. This is the volume gone wild. So these are investors that are ultra protective of their uh, portfolio. So they are heavily into the VIX right now. Uh, DJT, uh, have you noticed the wild volatility in DJT? The DJT from uh, September, from actually the end of September into the end of October is up 377%. Uh, uh, that literally is $45. This is massive. This has been a massive move. And now it has pulled back almost uh, almost 50%. And today it rotated. Today has seen tons of volatility after creating a new high. There are a lot of speculations that's going to go to $70. There are some $70 calls that are... Uh, 
that are um on unusual uh so um just imagine what if trump wins this is gonna go ballistic it's just gonna be wild uh also for the stock swing trader for those of you that are you know throughout this course if you guys have any questions you could go to our website go under the services tab and you can see all the services that we offer there this is our stock swing trader for um uh select uh, selective stocks and what have you so Uh, I just want to reiterate the caution that you need to have when trading this week. Uh, don't over trade. So use maximum caution when trading. Uh, always position size. Uh, don't over trade over the upcoming day. So one trade and done. If you're a day trader, two days or two trades and done. And that's pretty much it. And don't over trade. I actually have a really impressive list that I have on watch. NVIDIA is one of them. I'm in NVIDIA as a swing trade, but I want to add to it. But I'm just uh, waiting for tomorrow. I just waiting for tomorrow. I just because today was an inside day as well. But just uh, I, we will revisit some charts. Okay, so let's talk a Trump win. So what is going to happen? So the stock market might react favorable favorably in sectors where his policies have historically been beneficial. Trump's administration is focused on tax cuts, deregulations, and support for fossil fuels and manufacturing, which could shape sectoral gains and uh, investor sentiment. So he's very good for the stock market. We saw that he was very good for the stock market uh, from 2016 to 2020. Okay, now uh, let's break it down. What would the market and how would how is the market likely to react? Okay, so we're talking about hypothetical uh, actions. Well, first of all, it's drill, baby, drill, right? So the energy sector is going to be on fire, the fossil fuels, right? So some of the stocks that uh, are going to be in play uh, are going to be ExxonMobil, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, okay? And of course, commodities like natural gas, oil, like uh, USO, right? Uh, and XLE as an ETF. So these are going to be the ones that if you want to take pencil, uh, uh, paper and pencil to write these down, jot these down. Uh, these are going to be the largest companies that are going to be uh, most likely on fire. Okay. Uh, let's see what the next one is. Uh, defense and aerospace. We knew, we all know that you know Trump increased military spending significantly, right? So what would be the companies that would benefit from here? Uh, Lockheed Martin, Northrop uh, um, uh, Grumman, Raytheon Technologies, Gerald Dynamics, and one more. I'm adding GE here. Okay, so these are so LMT, right? LMT actually has a really, really nice pattern. And uh, I think it's going to be one of the picks as we're going into the end of the year, regardless of who wins the election, because it has had a massive, massive, massive year. All right, let's talk about financial and let's talk about uh, the financial sector and the banking sector. So a Trump administration might continue to favor deregulation and financial services Uh, supporting an environment conductive to higher profitability in banking, lending, and financial services. So I made up a list of potential winners. That would be JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, the big banks, Bank of America. These should be top watches uh, because they could benefit from looser financial regulations as well as smaller regional banks. We saw that regional banks were on fire from 2019 to 2020. And what was the one uh, ETF that was on fire? Russell, right? So Russell uh, is has to be a main watch for everybody in here on a potential Trump win. And what else do you think is going to catch and be on fire? Crypto. Okay, so we're looking at Bitcoin, we're looking at Solana, right? So these are the ones that are going to be primarily in play. Number four, industrials and manufacturing. Trump's focus on revitalizing domestic manufacturing and reducing dependency on foreign supplies could boost industrial companies, particularly those that are in the U.S., So we're looking at companies in construction, engineering, and manufacturing. We're looking at Caterpillar, 3M, Honeywell. Remember, Dow was uh, uh, outperforming 
uh, and it had a fantastic performance. So we're talking to right now as uh, ETS, we're talking about IWM so far, and we're talking about the Dow. So Dow is heavy in oil, is heavy in manufacturing. So the Dow would benefit off of this. Number five, pharmaceuticals and biotech. While Trump did advocate for lower drug prices, his approach to healthcare has generally favored the pharmaceutical industry, particularly in a deregulated environment. So potential winners, right? We're talking about large pharmaceutical companies that are literally dumped right now. So we're looking at Pfizer, we're looking at Johnson & Johnson, and we're looking at Merck that could benefit from reduced or regulatory scrutiny. As, uh, as could biotech firms involved in innovation and drug development. Ready for number six, sex as technology. It's going to have selective impact. And this is, uh, we're going to talk about a potential Harris win. And uh, this is going to be uh, pretty much the same for both. So this is going to have a mixed impact because Trump's stance on technology regulation is complex, especially with regards to social media and large tech firms uh, he has criticized. However, his administration previously favored tax incentives uh, for deregulation for innovation, okay? So potential winners and losers here. So tech companies in areas like artificial intelligence, cybersecurity and infrastructure like Oracle, IBM, Cisco may benefit. By the way, Cisco, beautiful stock with a beautiful pattern for hire, however, Social media giants, Meta and Alphabet, could face criticism uh, or regulation, uh, especially related to censorship and privacy data. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to watch this on a potential Trump win starting with January, not necessarily so January, February, definitely represented into the first quarter earnings. And not necessarily uh, at first quarter earnings, and that would be more like April, May. Uh, because right now, Meta, I mean, all the ads, everything that has been going on right now, you know, they um, they are pretty much going to have a very, uh, I would say, a, a great quarter uh, that are that is going to be reported uh, for uh, uh, for Q1. But I think that uh, it's not going to be really affected right away. So this is something that we need to pay attention to all, all these regulations. Number six, agriculture and commodities. So pay very close attention to commodities. That's why this presentation is for futures traders is also for uh, stock traders. So Trump's policies have included trade protection for farmers and agricultural uh, and agricultural subsidiaries. Uh, ex expanded support for American agriculture, including tariffs to protect farmers that would benefit agricultural stocks. Have you guys have you guys looked at literally commodities right now, like wheat, um, soybeans? Okay, so for the last few and a couple of years, I haven't I haven't had a uh, I haven't had a swing trade in those commodities. Like in a really long time, at least two years or so, maybe traded one here and there, but um, they they have not been active. So potential winners are going to be companies like uh, like John Deere and agricultural commodities like Archer Daniels Midland and Bunch LTD that could benefit from favorable po policies. Uh, number seven, commodities. Uh, gold and silver, they're going to continue to be hot. And I think they're going to continue to be hot under both administrations, right? Either a Trump win or a Harris win. Uh, and crypto, uh, let's pay all attention to Bitcoin. We also have the uh, GBTC available, MSTR, Coin, Solana, and pay attention to SQ and NVIDIA for blockchain technology. These are going to be super hot. NVIDIA is going to be hot, hotter than ever. I do have a very a big position uh, in my investing account, and I'm still swing trading it, <laughs> and I'm investing, continue to pump into it every single month. Uh, so overall market sentiment on a Trump win, that means that corporate tax cuts, this is the biggest thing uh, that the market is excited about. So the market would likely respond very positively if Trump were to propose additional tax cuts, especially if they benefit corporations and high earners, which would support higher corporate profitability. 
uh, tariffs and trade tensions, right? Here, uh, Trump's approach to trade, particularly with China, could introduce uh, volatility. Do you guys remember? I don't know if you guys have been trading in the market in um, uh, 2016 through 2020. You could actually take a look at some charts. And there was a back and forth war, China, US, that increased the volatility. And we were like, oh, no, can you please talk when the market is closing? Okay, <laughs> because the volatility was insane. And it was a back and forth between China, and US. Uh, markets might react defensively in sectors exposed to international trade risk, while domestic focused industries, um, uh, in industries might see gain. So general market tone, given Trump's pro business stance, Wall Street may initially react positively to his win, especially in anticipation of a continued low regulation, low tax environment. However, any trade disputes or tariffs could introduce uncertainty in specific sectors reliant on global supply chains. So while these predictions depend on the specific policies uh, he might pursue, a Trump victory would likely favor sectors aligned with domestic production, reduced regulation, and corporate-friendly environment. So markets could experience volatility due to trade dynamics, but overall investors might see potential for growth in these specific industries. All right, so what would happen if Harris was to win? So if Kamala Harris uh, were to win the presidency, the stock market might react based on expectations tied to her policy positions and political learnings. Here's a breakdown of sectors that may benefit along with specific areas where her policies might lead to sectoral growth and increased volatility. Number one, on a Harris win, we will see the Green Deal, a lot of the Green Deal and a lot of policies that are going to come from that Green Deal. So clean energy and renewables benefit. So one of the pros is going to be that her administration would likely favor green initiatives with a focus on expanding the renewable energy sector. Policies could include increased tax incentives for clean energy, more stringent emission uh, regulations and Investments in solar, wind, and other renewables. So potential winners here, we're looking at First Solar, we're looking at Stock NEE, Nextera Energy, we're looking at Tesla, we're looking at Rivian, and everything that is uh, green. So the And also battery production might see stock prices increase. Now, infrastructure and construction under her administration. So here's the benefits. Uh, Harris has supported infrastructure investments, especially for climate resilient projects and modernizing public infrastructure, which could lead to growth in construction and engineering. Uh, potential winners could be, again, and these are going to be the, some stocks that are going to be favored uh, on a Trump win or a Harris win. So Caterpillar. Caterpillar continues to be very uh, very hot stock. And it's one of those stocks that are actually really great for investing as well. I know it's slow, but it, it's it's truly worth it. It's a very strong stock. So Caterpillar, Vulcan Materials, um, and also engineering firms, as well as companies involved in modernizing electric grids, right? Because in order to have green energy, first of all, I think we need the grids. Uh, number three, healthcare and pharmaceuticals. Um, it's going to have a mixed impact. Uh, so Harris has advocated for extended healthcare access and support for pharmaceutical regulation. Uh, her healthcare market may experience mixed results as drug drug pricing reforms could pressure pharmaceutical companies, uh, while insurers may benefit from the extended coverage. Uh, potential winners and losers here. So, um, managed uh, uh, managed care providers such as United Healthcare, which is a giant, and Anthem, might benefit if the insured base expands. However, pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and LLL can see an increased regulatory pressure on drug pricing. So, that's that. Uh, also, let's take a look at technology and broadband expansion. So the benefit is that Harris has advocated for broader technology access, right? Uh, and uh, an increase in broadband coverage, which would support both 
large tech firms and telecommunication companies. Uh, potential winners are going to be companies like Comcast and Verizon. We've seen all Comcast perform really well during the uh, last three and a half years. And large technology firms that can benefit from extended digital infrastructure uh, and increased public tech uh, investment like Microsoft and Alphabet. Financials. Uh, here's going to have kind of like a mixed, right? So we're going to talk about the potential pressure, stricter uh, regulatory policies such as consumer protection and possibility of increased tax on high-end earners and corporations that could create headwinds for some of the financial sector. So we're going to pay very close attention to that in the following days. Uh, mixed impact uh, that we're talking about banks and mixed impact, like I say, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs. These are stocks that are were under Trump and this is going to be pretty mixed, might face tighter regulations. OK, um, so under Trump administration, we saw that these companies, these two companies especially could thrive under her company. They I remember the sideways range that we had in these um uh, and these two stocks, I played them. I played them last year. Uh, we actually got into them last October. It was like a year ago uh, for a swing trade, a swing trade that lasted for months uh, for higher. Um, and we actually closed the trades uh, this year. Uh, and it started with a swing. So we plan on being into that trade for like a couple of weeks or so. And we ended up being in those trades for, uh, for months uh, with massive gains, obviously. Let's talk about defense and aerospace. So potential pressure, historically Democratic administration may prioritize social and domestic spending over defense, potentially reducing growth in defense contracts and potential losers. Again, you see the companies that are were going to thrive under Trump here may face slower growth as military budgets are uh, curate, uh, curtailed in favor of domestic priorities. Uh, consumer discretionary, uh, potential boost, uh, policies focused on boosting middle and lower income household incomes like minimum wage increases and expanded health care could increase consumer spending. Potential winners here are going to be Walmart Target. Also pay attention to all those dollar stores, uh, dollar, dollar store stocks because they are going to be, uh, um, you know, preferred type of stock. And of course, consumer goods like Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson as well might benefit from increased consumer spending power. So overall sentiment, initial market reaction may lean towards caution uh, due to possible shifts in corporate taxes, stricter regulation, and environmental compliance, uh, compliance costs. However, the sector highlighted uh, into the above slides uh, could see specific gains or losses depending on the administration's actions. Uh, markets tend to adjust to policy uh, changes over time, and historically, they adapt once um, investors fully assess the economic landscape under the new policies. So a uh, Harris win stocks would be also a uh, look at some commodities. We talked about the green deal, so uh, stocks, uh, 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 stocks like uh, stocks and commodities like gold, silver, copper, lithium, and cobalt. They are going to be very hot, so uh, they should represent uh, your hot list. They should be on your hot list. Uh, a clean sweep for either party in Washington could have ramifications for tax and trade policies and new spending plans. So be very careful. Uh, also, um, before we wrap things up here, uh, the 90-day uh, Power Income Futures uh, Trading Masterclass, which is something that uh, we will have as a special for this year, and it's going to uh, be the complete masterclass for futures, for the day trader, and for the swing trader. For the first time, we are including, we're giving you guys a mega bonus, and we are including the Stock Swing Trading Course for free. It is a $4,999 value, and it's yours for free. It will be added to the five-day Power Income Futures Day Trading Course, so it's going to be one price, <laughs> 
for basically everything in here. And this is for the December class only. We're not going to be repeating this deal ever again. Uh, the class is going to start on December 9th, and it's going to start with a five-day la five live comprehensive, massive five-day course. It's going to be from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and if you join now, we had tons of traders uh, last week that have joined. And uh, the advantage is that if you join now, you get to jump into the trading room ASAP. So if you joined the program now, you will also receive immediately instant access to the trading room so you can start trading right away. Uh, it is a professional trading program. It was voted the best industry by Benzinga. We were awarded best and first place uh, in uh, tra financial literacy uh, and education and services in 2021. So we really pride, uh, pride that. So what you get with this and before we get to charts, I'm just going to um, tell you a little bit of our course. We're gonna, you're going to get lifetime access to the Power Income Futures trading course live class that you're going to be able to uh, go from zero to hero, from student to pro trader. We're also going to provide you the e-manual, which is about 650 pages. And don't forget that we are adding the futures course for uh, uh, the future swing trading course for free. We're also going to, you're also going to be getting the on-demand recordings and they're yours to keep forever. You're going to get unlimited live retakes and we encourage students to come into the free unlimited retakes. Every single time we, uh, we do a course and we teach a course, we invite all the past students. We have stu students that uh, started with us in 2015 or 2016 in futures. They were the first ones. Uh, and they know when they started, the manual was like 250 pages. Over time, it tripled, okay? So it tripled. It's just going to get even better and better and better. We have added a lot of things to it. You won't need everything at once, uh, but we will highlight all the things that you need right away and all the things that you will need down the road so you don't. we don't overclutter your brain. Uh, you're going to have these unlimited retakes that are going to be phenomenal. They are an amazing value. You can come uh, in the live session anytime you want. Uh, we're going to be sending invitations to everybody each and every time we have a course, a live course on. And trust me, the more you come for the live retakes, the more light bulbs you're going to have because there's no such thing as, oh, you know what? I'm going to take this course and I'm going to be a master trader in five days. No, that is impossible. Plus, you're going to be trading with us for five months. You have November, December, January, February, and March. You're going to be trading with us for five months. So literally, it's more than 90 days. So we're considering the 90 days. So 90 days, you're going to be interacting with me every single day. So you're going to be interacting with me the five days where you're going to learn the course and you're going to be interacting with me for 90 plus days, actually five months, uh, for, because you're going to be trading live with me. Uh, we're also providing you a private X feed. We're providing you with a platform layout. You're going to have uh, student personal support um, for in the trading where you can ask any questions. You can email me, etc. We're providing you with a risk sheet. And uh, of course, the biggest thing is now you have the stock that I'm sorry, not the stock. It's the swing trading course for futures for free. So don't confuse that it's not stock. Uh, it's just for futures and that's for free, especially that we have these commodities that are going to be in play like copper. We're going to take a look at some charts tonight. Uh, the value of the course is literally over $36,000 and the course is only $5,999. You can hop in the trading room, come in the trading room. We have one day passes, five day passes available for you guys. Just see what the rave is all about. We, um, um, I would say 95% of the traders that are with us stay with us and even if they have to go on vacation or they leave and they take a break from trading a month or two months or six months they're still coming back okay so they're not going anywhere so uh and there's a reason for that the trading room is focused on 
producing profits. That's it. We don't teach in the trading room. I explain what I'm doing, but the main focus in the trading room is trading. It's not like, oh, I'm going to explain to you how this works. No, we don't do that. We have a course that is designed to do that. And when we're trading, we're trading. My number one objective is to make money. Uh, if you're interested, the link is right here. It's tradeallout.com forward slash futures. It's literally the only place where you can learn how to trade like a pro uh, as you earn trading with us live every single day in the trading room. So if you want to start your journey now, click that tab. We're going to be closing the doors on this special offer uh, actually tomorrow. Okay, so now uh, let's go to some charts, right? So first of all, let's analyze and see where we're at right now. So uh, we are a couple of hours away from, um, you know, some of the, uh, uh, from, you know, kind of like seeing some action into the market and some of the polls are going to be closing. So um, that, that is going to be the time. So after nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, that's going to be the time to start looking at the market. But take a look at what the market did today. Uh, these are futures. We're going to talk futures and then we're going to talk about stocks in a second. So this right here is uh, NASDAQ. OK, so NASDAQ futures, you can see here it did a wonderful rotation. We're in line. This is a massive trend uh, and uh, it, it has the potential to start moving higher. So if the market would like the policies and loves, you know, the selection that the American people have done, um, the market is going to start blasting higher. It's going to start blasting higher all the way to the prior high into the 20,800. Then it's going to grow to 21,000. And after that, it has the potential to really start moving higher. And I'm going to give you just a quick estimate right here uh, for the end of the year. Potentially, if the market digests everything well, not only the election, but the FYMC, because we have a double whammy, uh, this um, uh, double whammy this uh, uh, this week, uh, but we're definitely can see 21200. OK, 21200. And this is like near future. Uh, and don't forget, we have, you know, just about two months right still uh, into the end of the year. We could potentially see 21922. We actually had two sessions this year of a forecast uh, for uh, 2024. Uh, we had one in January and we had one uh, end of uh, June and uh, all our predictions were 100% right on the money. That's why we have the results that we have as day traders and that's why we bank our profits every single month in the trade in the in the stock swing trader. That's why our performance is off the charts because we based our decisions solely on technicals. Of course, we take the, the fundamental aspect and you can see here that I do a lot of research uh, of, you know, I try to forecast and see what the next move can be into the market. And then we uh, take, we funnel all those potential stocks uh, into our hot list and we see, uh, we trace some levels and we see what we can, how we can work with those particular stocks. Uh, but definitely we could see an expansion higher on a break of the support under 19,900. The market is going to start retesting the 200 SMA. So that would be into this level right here of 19,140. Uh, and this is NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the m and &E &P. &E S&P is oil rich, financial rich, right? So we talked about these sectors. Uh, we could potentially see an immediate run into 59. Uh, 5922 into the prior high October 17th and from this point on we have room beyond 6,000 so beyond 6,000 into the end of the year uh, don't forget that Goldman Sachs I think they uh, estimated uh, a, a year so the uh, the year end around 6,000 or 6,200 or something like that so they pretty much are um, are looking for the upside uh, upside potential in here. Uh, the minor support created a double bottom. We talked about this. Uh, I actually mentioned it on Twitter even today. I mentioned it in uh, in the Dow. So double bottom formation. Also, I mentioned it yesterday. I think um, so. We have the double bottom effect here, right into the minor support. This is massively 
And because we have the bottom right here, this would shift right here. The trend line would shift right here. So we have low, higher low, and a higher low with the double bottom, which could project the price much, much higher. In case we break the minor support zone, we could react. The market could have a reaction, uh, like I said, and if the VIX is going to go into that a bit in, into that crazy upside target, we will have the S&P and, of course, the SPIs just plummet, revisiting the 200 SMA. And that would be uh, that would be like a very sharp pullback. And the next decision zone, the next decision zone is going to be here. One thing that I wanted to mention is notice how the volume has decreased. So because of the, you know, um, uh, uncertainty, they're not they're not there has there have not been a lot of investors uh, to the long side. So a lot of hedge funds were uh, were lined up with and actually produced this buying and retail traders as well. But notice that there were, there haven't been a lot of institutions. Uh, in, in fact, Warren Buffett sold tons of his uh, stocks and sh uh, shares, and he's sitting on a pile of cash right now. Uh, maybe there's a reason for that. Let's take a look at Russell quickly. Russell, big picture would be to break this 2320. Under a Trump win, this would benefit. So Russell is going to go ballistic again. If you want to take a quick look here of how the market reacted from uh, 2016, let's see here on the weekly, or let's see the monthly, let's see if we can, oh, we can't, we can't, we'd have 2017, but we have 2017 to 18, here's where the trade war happened, this is the pandemic, and uh, after the pandemic right here, but definitely, like I said, you know, um, Russell would be a really big winner in this case. And of course, the Dow, like I said, the Dow, look at the chart of the Dow. A monthly chart is just outstanding. Uh, yes, of course, Matt, I will do the SPX. I, I'll go through everything. <laughs> if you have, if you guys have time, okay? So I'm going to go through a lot of charts tonight, okay? Uh, hey, Dennis, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. All right, so... In why, like I said, this is going to be like the the big uh, deal, um, the Dow, right? This is going to be the big winner under a Trump win. So there, so from my past experience, okay, so my past experience, yeah, Matt, I could do intraday as well. So from my personal experience, because I've traded the 2016, so we would have the uh, uh, the IWM Russell uh russell futures as well the dow and diamonds and the dow futures that are going to benefit the max in fact uh i i am really honest with you guys take a look at what's happening right now in the dow right so take a look at what's happening we're already having a gap up in the dow okay um <laughs> hey randy Say hi to Francie for me. Okay, so here we are. We're a little gapped up right here, which is crazy, right? Because it's still very early. But anyways, this is where we're at, okay? So um, this is pretty insane that we are right here. I'm going to go a little bit to intraday. Hi, Francie. So nice to see you. Okay, so here's where we are right now. So 42, 4, Okay, so yeah, quite crazy. All right, so um, what else do we have here? Uh, let's take a look at gold, right? Gold futures. Uh, this is the breakout that we took. Let's remove these, right? All right, so this is the daily chart for uh, gold. Uh, I'm not sure this is the right one, though. Uh, okay, I guess this one is uh, this one is the right one. All right, so you can see here we have traded gold like this year, like it was crazy. Uh, and this is this is this is going to have a really massive uh, massive move uh, when the um, uh, w when the new president is going and actually uh, up to the results it's gonna probably be very crazy and of course tomorrow it's going to be wild as well uh, bonds uh, this is the daily chart in the bonds they are going to have a reaction as well you could see that the bonds are lifting a little bit here volume pretty constant uh, I'm seeing the volume ripped to the upside a little bit here on November 1st uh, signs that it is putting up a bottom right so there is some exhaustion whomever wanted to be uh, wanted to uh, 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 short is done shorting and has exited. This is what this candle is. Uh, this uh, volume bar is telling us that everybody that 
you know, um, uh, wanted out is pretty much out right now. And we could see a lift in price. So this could be a double bottom formation. So it's going to be very interesting, especially looking uh, and going into next week because the weekly charts are a lot more interesting. Uh, you can see here that we have a low, we have a higher low and a higher low right here. So the, uh, the projection would be for higher. Um, so we are very close to a... Um, reversal towards a rotation. So if the price gets over 118.90, this is going to be very, very, very um, appealing. It's going to be very, very, very appealing right here. This, this is bonds right here. Very, very strong pattern with a higher low. This is going to transition, go into this double, double top. So this, this is going to be a huge area of resistance right here. Uh, it's actually uh, coming from a prior low, uh, high, high right here, and it could project higher into this high. So the move, th this could be a, like a very considerable move. Let's see, percentage wise, um, I would say it could be like a 6% move, which is pretty strong, okay? So remember to revisit these charts uh, after the fact. So this is what we're doing in analysis. Just look at these charts at the end of the week and look at these charts going into next week to see how this plays out, okay? This is the most important thing. It's not only that you're here and we're hearing about these levels. Watch this, okay? Watch this in a few days. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the stock market and we're gonna go right here and we're gonna take them one by one. First of all, we started with the uh, NASDAQ. We're gonna continue with NASDAQ here with the Qs, right? Double bottom formation, all right, beautiful into the minor support. Today was outstanding for higher. Uh, and it looks like it really wants to go back into the 500 to 501. And if it takes this high out, because of this uh, of this higher low, it has so many odds of breaking actually above this high rate here of 505, right? So if we take this high out of 505.20, which is the old time high, we're heading towards massive projections higher uh, to 625 or so that I have calculated. So uh, Qs are looking spectacular. The spiders are also doing really well because we do have a double bottom formation here. The trend line is going to go right here. So we're right on point with the trend uh, for higher. So this basically here, we are trading again into the breakout that we had before on October 9th. And we're heading back into these highs of 586. Now, what happens if Let's say the market doesn't like what happens tonight, where it's going to happen tomorrow. Let's say the market is not going to like what the FOMC is going to decide on Thursday. Let's say we are not going, let's say we get the election results that, you know, the market is not going to favor those. And let's see, we're, uh, let's say we're getting, uh, we're getting to the short side. Any breach, and guys, be very careful, any breach below 560 is going to send the price lower in probably the first target it would be like a 535 to 537 so be prepared okay as well let's take a look at the diamonds we have a minor support action right here beautiful reaction so the uh, the the price pulled back into the prior high and into the prior high how spectacular is that minor support again the trend line is supported here right now the trend is intact we are in power trend uh um country right here this is beautiful moving back up today we had a massive candle typically the next day following such a massive wind candle, we would absolutely continue a little bit higher. All right, let's take a look at IWM. IWM uh, broke above the resistance at 222. In fact, it should be heading higher into the 228. If the market is not going to be in sync with whatever, you know, tonight is going to be about or whatever we're going to have from the FOMC, on any break of 214, the market is going to start moving lower towards the 207 and most likely it's going to go back uh, back down into the 197 to 195. So be prepared in both cases. The market at this point is pricing in a win for somebody. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything else, but it's kind of pricing in a win. I'm not going to say for whom. Okay. Because I don't want to influence anything here, but it's pricing, uh, it's pricing a win for someone. Okay. And now let's talk about 
the SPX. Uh, so bottom line is that we have the resistance here. We had the uh, prior break, uh, breakout here back in uh, on October 9th. Let's see here. All right. So we also have this nice double bottom uh, uh, effect here. So I have posted this chart almost every single day. If you go on my X feed, you will see it. And I said that if over resistance, we will look at a double bottom, right? So over resistance, meaning over this uh, 5771, we're looking at a double bottom, which is ramp time, new all time highs coming up to a chart near you. So I posted this a few days ago, actually. Okay. So since then, it already happened. Okay. So my analysis was right on point. Uh, the pivot has formed. We are officially in a double bottom territory. And it's not that only we're in a double bottom territory, it's where the double bottom has formed. Because this double bottom has formed into this massive minor support. So these two prior highs created this double bottom. So we have the double tops that now created the double bottom formation, which is incredibly strong, especially that is happening at the 5,700 into the whole number. We are right into the point of the prior breakout, which means that if we take this out of the market digest, remember that the S&P is rich in two things, right? So it's rich in financials and it's rich in drill, baby, drill, okay? So you guys know possibly what can happen with SPX. On a Trump win, this could go higher. I'm not saying that if a Harris win, this is gonna go lower, okay? But this is what the market favors. I'm talking about what the market favors based on the policies and based on the symbols. So it's not political. OK. All right. So I hope I hope it's OK with you that I'm sharing these things. So uh, so again, we're creating these higher uh, higher highs and higher lows on the chart. So this is very impressive. OK, I do have a request for intraday. So I'm going to drill in to a five minute chart which you can see here, massive range going on, right? So we have uh, the bottoms, right? We have the bottoms, it, exactly. So it's 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 the market, I mean, okay? So basically, if we get a break of 57.80, which we have uh, punched into 83, okay? Uh, if we get the price over 84, 85, let's say over 90, so between 80 and 90, uh, it favors more upside. And as far as target goes, we have uh, the high here, which is at 58.78. So 58.78 is going to be the uh, targeting area. Okay. This is going to be the targeting uh, targeting area right here uh, from, the uh, from the prior pivot high. So we're at 82 right now. You guys can see it. This high 78. So this would be for an intraday, uh, for an intraday move. And of course, if let's say the market is not gonna like, let's say let's say they're not gonna announce any anything. The, there's a very strong chance that the market is gonna remain range bound uh, for tomorrow or until they um, are going to announce the winner. And at that point, you you know very well, right? It's gonna be probably bullish above or bearish uh, bearish below. All right, so these are going to be some of the things that uh, we are uh, we're looking at. Uh, I want to also take a quick look. We talked about gold, but I want to revisit the GLD here as well. So GLD is power training and has been power training and power training and power training. You guys can see here like all summer long, all fall has been power training. This could potentially benefit uh, as well, higher prices. Uh, remember that Goldman Sachs is very bullish on gold as well. Gold is seen as a safe haven into election, into FOMC. Uh, this is going to have a big splash into the FOMC as well. So be very cautious if you're trading gold. So for example, today I saw this potential trade in gold uh, that would be like over 255. So I like, I, I am drooling over it. I love it over 255 for long, but I'm not going to take it. I want to get the election uh, out of the charts and uh, then I will look at gold. And of course, the volatility is going to come on Thursday as well. So I think I'm going to make a decision. Um, I'm going to make a decision probably on Friday. So <laughs> Friday, if not next week. Uh, so this is what I see in the market right now. 
Uh, like I said, JP Morgan, we're going to bring some of the uh, stocks that we have uh, talked about that could potentially, you know, have a, you know, pretty good impact uh, on the market. And uh, remember, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, a Trump win would favor both of these, uh, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. I'm not saying, I mean, take a look under, uh, under, uh, under Biden. I mean, still look at this. I mean, it's still going higher, but it would benefit more. Okay. It would benefit more. Definitely. This is the level that I look for a breakout. The 226.81. This is going to be the one that may potentially bring a lot of upside. And especially that, take a look at this, take a look at the quarter. I want to show you the annual. This is this year. This is what this stock has done this year. Now, on a, I, I, it still has room for the upside. It has room to about 310 or something like that the last time that I checked some projections. So massive year. This is going to be a stock for window dressing as well. We're going to have uh, we're going to have a seminar for window dressing as well. Uh, window dressing, January effects, Santa Claus rally and all that fun stuff. I love to trade these things. I love to trade election. I love to trade all these little things that a lot of traders, they say like, oh, it's, you know, it's Christmas. I'm going to take the time off. Nothing's going to happen in the market. There's no volume and they're missing out big bucks. All right. So um, this is uh, uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs as well. Goldman Sachs is beautiful for hire. Uh, I preferred um, uh, JP Morgan because, well, here's the thing. JP Morgan, uh, Okay, let's put it here. JP Morgan. Okay, JP Morgan is a $200, $200 stock. Goldman Sachs, as you can see, it's a $500 stock. Okay, so you can get more shares with Goldman Sachs or positions, I think, than this. And that's that's the only reason. But I do like it. Uh, it is very, very strong. I like the fact that it's actually creating this massive pennant right here that it's ready to make a splash. And take a look at today's candle. I'm gonna zoom it in so you guys can see it. Green candle right into this descending resistance, a break above, it's gonna send it soaring back into the prior high and back into new highs. So this is gonna be really outstanding. All right, let's talk about uh, two other stocks that I like, uh, XOM. Okay, this is Exxon Mobil. We talked about this. All right, this is a very good dividend stock, okay? XOM is a really great dividend stock. As you can see here, it has really done much of nothing lately. So it has a double bottom. Uh, it went high into October and then it pulled back, okay? But it pulled back into a really nice area into this resistance that we have from this massive range right here. So uh, it looks very nice for a continuation higher. I do like the way the quarterly is set. There was a lot of buying into the second quarter, a lot of buying into the third quarter, and it created a new high, which is impressive, into this quarter, very young quarter, uh, so November. And what I'm trying to say is that the, uh, oops, sorry about that. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that you finally have a quarterly breakout, a quarterly breakthrough, right? So typically when this happens, when you have this quarterly breakthrough, massive things happen. Do you guys want me to show you an example of how this pattern affected and created massive velocity? I'm gonna give you one example here. So remember, these are yearly charts and each bar represents one year of trading activity. Okay, I'm gonna show you here. Let's you know, we talked about the cues, right? All right, take a look at this breakout here, okay? Take a look at this breakout here. So this is 2022, this is 2023. And this was the breakthrough year, okay? This was the breakthrough year. So I'm gonna go back at XOM so you guys could see it, all right? Okay, here it is. This is the baby face, right? This is the baby face. So it's going to be breakthrough and continuation higher. This is what this chart can do for us. Also, uh, COP, this could also benefit. Uh, this is a rather very, very choppy. It's not really of my liking, but this could, um, ConocoPhillips could potentially have a um, ha benefit from this. And it has been sideways for, um, it has been sideways for some time now. So if you guys can see it here, since March of 2022, 
Uh, it has held pretty steady. So remember when the market and everything else was pulling back in 2022? Well, this one didn't really pull back that much, but it held this big range right here. So it's basically from under 100 to about 130. So it has this 130 uh, do, uh, um, um, it has $30 range. It's just very, very sloppy right now. Okay. So this could also benefit. It's just going to give you the yearly outlook. All right. <clears throat> so we already have an inside doji. Okay. Uh, exactly, Matt. Okay. Um, so bottom line is that, uh, yes, uh, Gorka, the video is going to be sent out to everybody. Uh, after it's either going to be tonight or tomorrow, <clears throat> I'm going to go to an election party later, believe it or not. So I don't even know how I'm going to be trading tomorrow, but tonight we're not going to sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Um, so, um, what I'm trying to say here is that we can potentially have the, the breakthrough as well. So, uh, if we start trading above this 128 and change, you can see here that we already started to go higher a little bit. And I, I look, I would actually, it's not going to be, COP is not going to be the stock that is going to be in play for the rest of the year, in my personal opinion. Um, <laughs> yes. All right. It's not going to be my personal favorite uh, COP, but definitely this is something that uh, it's going to be in play. And CVX, okay. Oops, CVX. Here we go. All right. Let's go to the weekly here. Let, rather go to the monthly. You can see here that most of these stocks have not done um, uh, much since uh, 2002, right? So big fat range. Again, we could potentially see a squeeze here uh, because we have these descending tops, but the ultimate trend is higher, right? So you can see here that we're definitely, you know, looking for a higher expansion. If we start breaking above these highs, we could start moving higher, okay? So we could definitely... Uh, st uh, start moving higher. So this could be uh, this could be a win. Uh, I also want to put GBTC. All right. So we have GBTC. Uh, here is uh, the weekly. Whoops. Here it is. Okay. Here's the weekly. Uh, this is kind of like a buy and hold type of thing, in my opinion. So you're either committed or you're not. It's you know, it still needs to break above this resistance right here. And you know where else may benefit? Uh, ARKB. Uh, okay, this is ARK, 21 shares. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, Kathy Woods. All right. ETF. I am in ARKB. It started for me as a swing trade earlier this year, and I decided to keep it. OK, so I am in this stock and I intend on keeping it. It could potentially have like a big breakout if on a Trump win. So this could benefit a lot if it starts breaking above the ETF high, which is 7361. It could really start going, going higher. I'm going to tell you how high uh, in a second. All right. So it could go as high as 80 bucks or 88 bucks. OK, so it, and then some and then some into 100 bucks. I would say 100 bucks, not 112. But this could definitely be uh, very uh, impressive. Uh, LMT. So I'm going to take a look at this one. Uh, this is a weekly chart, sharp pullback, but right into the 20 SMA. Very technical stock. Very, very technical stock. Watch the close this week. And on a Trump win, uh, if we break above the high, whatever the high is uh, of this week, because the high is going to vary so far, we have the high here, the low here. So whatever the high is going to be on Friday after the close, it's going to be a strong buy. OK, if on Monday we take out or anytime next week we take out the high, whatever the high is into um, into LMT on on the weekly want to put here GE. As well, so GE is very strong retracement, and this is a weekly chart retracement back to the 20 SMA. Uh, so, um, also another stock that pulled back right into let just uh extend this right into the minor support zone. Look how beautiful it is! It's not violating minor support, it means that any kind of rotation above this 10 EMA of 176.50 is gonna push the price higher with the first target of 180, 182. Second target into 190 and third target into the 196. So it looks very good for a 
uh, move higher. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, I actually have a list here. Um, okay, let's take a look at, all right, forgot about this list. Okay, uh, Caterpillar. Okay, so we're gonna revisit some stocks here. So Caterpillar, Caterpillar broke down. So reported earnings moved down a little bit. Now it's back up. You can see it. So that's the new support level that we're gonna refer to. We also have these two double top formations and the price retraced right into it and rotated. We're gonna go higher. This is the resistance that we have with 404. So it's just gonna start moving, uh, moving a little bit higher as long as 363 is going to hold. All right, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, let's take a look at home builders because they may benefit as well. So that is the XHB. Okay, so this is the H um X uh H H X H B. I'm sorry. Uh, this is the daily chart. Let's go look at the weekly chart here because this is what's so important. Uh, we could potentially have a buy over one nineteen. Very strong buy over one nineteen with a of uh, with follow through into the one twenty almost into the one twenty six with the first target right there, and um. Let's see, uh, regional banks. Let's take a look at regional banks because they are they could potentially be favored. That is KRE. Uh, you can see here that we have a nice comeback uh, from low, higher, low, higher, low, and a congestion right into this prior resistance. They could potentially go higher if the price gets over 61 bucks. All right. Um, See what else we have here we talked about oil we talked about Hall uh, Halliburton okay let's talk about Halliburton as oil I used to day trade the stock all the time when I was trading I actually don't really like COP and Halliburton I know they made the list because these are you know some of the most important um fossil fuel stocks energy production stocks but um I think we still have a lot of pressure here in Halliburton. Maybe if we get over 40 bucks, I will start looking and I will start, you know, feeling a little bit more comfortable about it. Uh, let's talk about some of uh, Kamala's uh, stocks, right? So uh, NEE, -E. take a look at NEE, -E. super strong. Uh, look at the growth that it had. Um, and also this year has been on fire. Let's take it to uh, the weekly here. So you can see only this, this, um, uh, uh, this past year, so we put in a bottom in October, just like all the market did, right? From 2022, uh, we put in a bottom and look at this. So 2024 has been very favorable for NEE, right? So it, uh, it worked and it still looks uh, very favorable moving forward. PLUG also, uh, this is going to be uh, another top watch. Uh, it's starting to bottom out a little bit. Again, very descending. I don't even really know how this is going to affect uh, uh, like a couple of win because, you know, I mean, take a look. Nothing really happened. So, yeah, 2021 and then fizzled out. So not a lot of interest. But uh, these are making the list. FSLR as uh, as well. I, I have more confidence in FSLR. I like this stock even a little bit more. Uh, for example, on the daily chart, we can see we had a high here in June, pretty much rain, range bound through summer. Uh, in fall, we started to pull back a little bit and uh, we are now into the core of the range. We could start moving. Um, yeah, this, this could potentially be favorable into the 222 and a little bit higher. So that would be interesting. Okay. My favorite NVIDIA, okay, uh, I promised you guys, NVIDIA, like I said, I love NVIDIA. I have it in my investing account. I have it in my swing trading account. I keep on adding to it. It's just that monster that keeps growing bigger and bigger. And at some point, I'm like, what am I doing? I mean, am I trading like only NVIDIA, <laughs> okay? So yeah, very strong. Um, I actually have this on my list and I could share with you guys right now. So for November, I'm gonna share with you like for November. Where is November? Okay, so for November, these these are our stocks. You can see here that we are already 
uh, ready to take position into them. It's just like we have in committers, right? So we have Reddit, we have NVIDIA, we have Tesla, we have GBTC, we have Starbucks, ZM, JP Morgan, Disney, Q's, and the Spies as well. So we're not committing yet. We just want to see, we have, we want to have a little bit more uh, uh, proof of what's to happen, okay? And then we can actually go full throttle in. I'm afraid of the volatility that we're going to be getting either tonight or in the next couple of days until we find out who the winner is. That's the only problem that I have. But NVIDIA looks very good. Over $140. It is a gem. It's, it's ripping higher. Like I said, I'm not taking a position yet, so I'm waiting a little bit on it. All right. Let's see what else we have on my list here. Um, okay. So we talked about ARKK, and I said that I do have a position in. Um, all right. Let's talk about XLV, right? This is the last one. XLV. All right, this is the healthcare, which is very strong. It's right into the 200 simple moving average. It has been consolidating for about five days, and this looks very good to uh, start moving higher. Um, over 148.50, they could start moving higher with targets into 150, into 151, 152, going towards 155, and back into this double top formation into 157 to 158. So this is a big watch as well. All right. So these are some of the um, stocks or commodities that I'm watching. Um, let's take a uh, let's take a look at UNG. Uh, this is natural gas. This is also going to uh, benefit right on a Trump win. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look at the monthly here. Oh, that is really bad. Uh, let's take a look at the weekly. OK. So as you can see here, so since uh, the peak in August 2022, the, this commodity has gone like to nothing. Uh, $12 right here, UNG, $12 stock right here. So we could potentially see a rise in this one. <clears throat> Let's take a look back. Let's go to the monthly. So we have, uh, I don't know if we can have um no i still need to go to the charts are really messy here so we're gonna do this all right so let's see what happened here so um you know from 2020 so in 2020 we had this double bottom we went higher in 2021 pulled back 2021 and created this uh peak in 2022 and since then we kind of like did nothing and we came to the lowest low 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 point i mean this is good for us because you know, gas is not uh, gas is not expensive. It's cheap, uh, but it could it could do better as a commodity. Uh, also, I want to take a look at TLT. Right, we looked at bond futures. Um, let's take a look at bonds. This is uh, ZB is the thirty year bond. This is TLT. That's the twenty year bond. Uh, I think TLT uh, could benefit uh, from um, uh, from a rotation here. Uh, onto the weekly chart so watch this very closely because if we get a trigger above this high right here and if we <coughs> manage to take out these <laughs> excuse me these ma's we could start getting to this a uh, hundred dollar area all right <clears throat> All right, Douglas is saying two Dow component components changing, uh, changing Nvidia and Intel and Sherwin Williams for the Dow on November eighth. Thanks so much, Douglas. Yes, so um, the Dow is ditching Intel and bringing Nvidia and Sherwin Williams on board. Uh, it could Gorka. It could. It could. So keep it on your watch list, right? Uh, keep it on the watch list. It is a very funky, yeah. Uh, it's a, so if you're looking at natural gas uh, futures, uh, literally this is called the widow maker. Okay, you're gonna lose more times than you win <laughs> in in this commodity. Okay, so this is a wrap, guys, for tonight. I actually intended to have like thirty minutes today, and we went for an hour and a half today. <laughs> All right. Uh, I can't wait to find that out, Matt. <laughs> what is your take? What is your take? Um, okay, yeah.
I'm with you. I'm with you, Kay. <laughs> hey, Jill, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, hey, Lori, you just jumped in? Yes, the thing, this uh, seminar was recorded and I'm going to be sending the link either a bit later tonight or tomorrow morning at the latest. So yeah, the link is going to be available. So I really hope you guys, you know, um, enjoy today's presentation. So I had a lot of fun, you know, putting it together and kind of like looking for uh, potential plays. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, really happy uh, that, okay, thanks so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you too. Um, yeah. So I'm really happy that you guys enjoyed it. The feedback is outstanding for tonight. So to ease some of the tension, that was my intention with this webinar, to ease some of the tension and to show you guys that, yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. The stock market is still going to be here uh, and uh, we're going to do great things. We're going to do really great things. Um, all right. Okay. So, yay. All right, so here it is, everybody. Thanks so much for participating. I will see you guys. We're really, really looking forward to teaching you how to trade, how to make money, and how to keep the money. And uh, don't forget that we have uh, uh, passes for the trading room in case you want to trade the aftermath of election with us. So thanks so much, everybody. Really looking forward to seeing everybody uh, in the trading room and in the class and into the next webinar. Thanks so much, everybody. Hey, Robert, thank you. I appreciate all the comments, guys. Love you. And I'll see you guys post-election. Next time we're going to meet, we're going to know who our next president is. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good one. Uh, Gorka, the uh, session is recorded. Uh, this uh, All this presentation was recorded. And uh, I will send it out uh either later on tonight or tomorrow oh the day trading session so you're already in the trading room We're, you're already in the trading room yeah and you're already in the uh stock swing trader so you're already trading with me <laughs> all right awesome no 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 we're not trading tonight <laughs> all right thanks so much everybody i'll see you guys uh uh, very soon. Thanks so much.